Hello everyone, this is Jose from KCB YouTube channel. Today we want to share with you our visit to Seoul for the Hyundai Insta EV prototype test drive. In this video you will enjoy a relaxed conversation between Automotive News editor Hans Graymill and me as we drive the new Insta through Seoul. Hope you enjoy it. I had a bad incident once in the U.S. where um, I was back home on vacation yeah. and I was out in the countryside and there are no other cars on the street and I just completely forgot and I was driving on the other side of the road and then a car came out way down and was coming at me on my side of the road. I was like, why is this guy driving at me? He's on my side of the road. What's wrong with him? <laughs> and then the car stopped. And then the car drove off to the side of the road. And I realized, oh, he, was, he thought that I was the crazy one because I was the one driving on the wrong side. But otherwise, I guess it's okay. It's easy because the, the steering wheel's on the other side. Yeah. So what makes it easy, you know. With that, we have a, a lot of people in Spain that uh, take their cars from UK ah, right. and they uh, well, put the Spanish plates and drive around, around, around with the steering oh. wheel in there. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Like a Jaguar or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sometimes I mean, you see that in Japan, like people want an authentic German Porsche or something. Yeah. How does that... Yeah, I don't know how that... I've never tried that driving. I think that must yeah. be difficult. Yeah, it should be. There are several. I think they, they need to put the, some things on the on the headlights. Uh, yeah. Some stickers on the headlights. Turns oh, really? What's that for? Uh, I think it's because uh, the headlight system is different from UK to Spain. Oh, so they yeah. kind of shine in your yeah, eyes, yeah. maybe. Yeah, because yeah. they're angled differently. Yeah, that's I it. See, uh, the point. So you have two options change the headlights or put the stickers on it. I see, interesting. Yeah. The stickers do what, kind of dim it a little bit? Or yeah. Or redirect it, maybe like a prism. I, I think it covers the place that can... can uh, uh, glare? Glare you, yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. A speed bump is ahead. In 300 meters, turn slight left. A speed bump is ahead. This seems like a very touristic place. Yeah, very, very touristic. I guess in August it must be the high season. Yeah, I think so. In five kilometers, turn right. So I asked uh, Mr. So about the price. Uh -huh. He told me it would be around 25 in Europe. Right. That would be good. Yeah, I was surprised. I was like, that's amazing price. Huh? So the range is about 300 kilometers. I guess that uh, seems like pretty good range uh, yeah. for this kind of small car. Yeah. Uh, the battery is pretty small in the here. It's like, mm. what, 41, 48 kilo? Uh, 42, 49. 49, yeah. yeah. So not very big. 
I don't know how heavy this car is. It doesn't. It must not be very heavy. No. But the battery is uh, might be heavy. It's a, a nickel nickel ba uh, yeah. battery. So. But usually twenty twenty five thousand euros electric cars has uh, LFB batteries ah, instead right. of nickel. I see. So that would be great as well. Yeah, that's an advantage, right? Yeah. Do you know who makes the battery for this? Uh, I'm not sure. I, but I think I sent them an uh, email with a bunch of questions, but I don't mm. think I've been answered yet. <laughs> I don't know if they will answer that one. Maybe, maybe in Busan, you can get more answers. But I think for for EV3, for Kia EV3, mm -hmm. they get a, a new agree, agreement will with LG. Right. And uh, they will make uh, batteries in Indonesia. Oh, okay. Yeah. But those are lithium uh, batteries, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. And the EV3, though, isn't a good comparison to this because that's based on the uh, eGMP yeah. platform, right? Yeah. Kia doesn't have a car like this, does it? That's based no. on uh, ICE. That I'm aware of. Uh, they, they are working on it. Oh, really? Okay. Have you seen these cars when when we are the product briefing? You see cars around on the window? Cars on the window. Uh, you, oh, yeah, oh uh, just now, you mean? Before? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you was saw the, one of them? Yeah. Oh, one, okay. one little small car, similar uh, to this, yeah. was camouflaged and was making uh, like a, a runs on uh, the, the. And that was a key? Yeah. But, uh, I think it's it? going to be called Clavis, Kia yeah, Clavis. Clavis. Yeah, oh. and it will be like this, the same as the Casper. We'll have okay. ICE and also EV. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. But uh, I'm not sure if Kia will call EV2 or oh, right. will make like Hyundai and left from is. Ionic or uh, EB range. Because it will be not based on the EGMPS, this one. What is that uh, base model for the Clavis? Casper. Uh, it's the same as Casper. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, what, doesn't Kia have a uh, their own version of the Casper? No, not yet. Like the, the... Not yet. They don't have something similar, no. to a different design or something. Huh? So they will launch these clavies and then after that we'll add the the EV. They are already testing the the ice version. I, see. I didn't see the the EV yet. Wait a minute, you're saying that Kia will have a ice version and a EV version, yeah, 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 just like this. Yeah. Hmm. Have you seen also the Nexo? Yeah. They have the next generation oh, Nexo testing. Next, yeah. Oh, you saw that this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No kidding. Well, good for you. You're paying attention. No, I didn't see it. What does it look like? Uh, too boxy. A little bit boxy. Was it the one that was kind of uh, testing off to the right in a big? Uh, that looked like a, a commercial vehicle to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Hyundai's PBB. Ah, okay. Yeah. Huh. The one you the next the next Nexo that you saw that's was that camouflaged or? Yeah. They have both uh, the sticker camouflage and also the canvas. Wow. Was. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. And how did you know that was the Nexo? I already speared. I already have pictures from this car like uh, two months ago. 
I see. And the Korean friends sent me. I <laughs> see. So you yeah. viewed the demos. Then. And and when we came inside the R and D center, mm -hmm. they have a nitrogen station, and the car was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> A speed bump is ahead. Oh, sorry. No problem. It's in the colony or whatever. Oh, they are to the group. In 700 meters, turn right. A speed bump is ahead. In 300 meters, turn right. Korea is pretty aggressive with these speed bumps, aren't they? Yeah. And also with the cameras. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a nightmare. It is, yeah. But at least they tell you. I guess that keeps, yeah. it, it keeps everybody in check, yeah. Yeah, turn right. That's interesting that you went to that car meet yesterday. Hmm. Because uh, when you drive around Korea, you don't see a lot of um, customized cars. Yeah. I think, it actually, from what I understand, it was kind of illegal to customize yeah, yeah, a car yeah. for a long, long time. And just recently, they kind of relaxed, but it's still pretty regulated. Yeah. They, they told me that they, they need to find, uh, like, uh, uh, big parking places mm -hmm. uh, to go because the police are pursuing them. <laughs> yeah. As soon good? as they see that they have a modified car, yeah, they automatically stop it there. <laughs> Isn't that kind of silly? I wonder why that is. What the origin of that is? Because, uh, well, uh, I think they they assume that when you have a modified car, you will be like uh, racing in the street. <laughs> yes, I guess I guess I understand yeah. that, but. Um, it just seems like such a throwback and old fashioned and uh, yeah. outdated idea. Especially for a, a country that wants to present itself as like a car making yeah. powerhouse. And they don't even let their own people uh, enjoy the cars. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I think that has, has actually hobbled the, the industry here because people don't get into the cars. They don't understand, uh, have a good appreciation for driving cars or have the fun of cars or the, yeah. the love of driving and uh, an appreciation of speed and performance. Uh, at the end, the, the only way they left them uh, was to drive inside the, the circuit. So I met two guys that have the car ready to go inside the circuit. I see. So they, they they went many times. And that circuit is a circuit ready car that they can also drive on the street. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if I have the picture of the interior. Uh, how much I, do they modify? Do they modify the engine a lot too? Uh, uh, they explain me that the, they can modify the engine and they can even swap the engine. But only, uh, for example, if you have a Kia, mm -hmm. you can change uh, the engine for another Kia model, but not Hyundai. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. In 700 meters, turn left. So I, I don't know if you remember uh, the Genesis Coupe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they used to swap the, the engine, the 2.0 turbo, mm -hmm. to the V6, the 3.8. Because it was very, very easy to do it. Interesting. They could take a Genesis and put it into what? A Kia? No, no, no. They can't do that, right? No. Or, the, in the same Genesis, the same Genesis they, change it, okay. they change it from the four cylinder to the V6. I see. And then they, they add turbos to that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's not so bad. Turn left and then turn right.
A speed bump is ahead. Turn right, and then you will reach your wing lane. I wonder how often, uh, how popular circuits are here, though, either. I think they have a few. A speed bump is ahead. Yeah, because one, they... one of the guys showed me uh, mm -hmm. he had the this bracelet from the circuit. Okay. So he had every circuit, they put it on the dashboard. Okay. Yeah, okay. the bracelet. Oh. Oh, and they have like a 10? 10 different? Yeah. Yes. Not too bad, I guess. Once they took us out to a, uh, I think it was for the G70, I think. And they took us out to a circuit way on the west side, sorry, the east side of the country. Yeah. And uh, it was a nice, it was an all right circus, circuit, but it wasn't that like super impressive. But it was like very far away. So I was, I thought to myself, wow. If, this is the nearest circuit they can take us to. It must mean that there aren't very many circuits in <laughs> Korea, but maybe that one is Jongnam, I think is the name. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> took forever to get to. Oh, I didn't took one picture of the inside. On the outside. So no break in the in two hundred um, years. Be careful of traffic. Like the sales ranking this Hyundai and Kia or even Genesis for that matter. Do they sell Genesis in in uh, Spain? No. Entering. How about the the Hyundai and Kia? Well, how Hyundai or Kia. So yeah. surprisingly, okay. after a few years, uh, they are second, first, second, third, depending on the month. Really? Yeah. And who is first then? Seat. Uh, no, not anymore. Huh? Now it's Toyota. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the hybrids. Amazing. They're killing it. Good for them. Wow. And Seat is not, uh, well, Seat is about to die. I see. Yeah. I see. After, after, <laughs> after that, uh, these EV plans get uh, modified mm -hmm. because of the EV demand drop. A slow down, yeah. Uh, they decided to make uh, another facelift to the current cars and keep it until 2028. I see. But after that, they won't develop any, any new car. Any new Seat? Yeah, all. they will oh. be Cupra's only. I see. Yeah, because they, they found that they, they can sell the same car uh, with a different logo and uh, have uh, three or 4,000 euros up and they will sell it ah. with the Cupra, yeah. Because currently the, the the Cupras that are already on sale mm -hmm. uh, were planned as set, but at the end they changed the logo I and see. they sell it. Yeah. Huh. So they're actually going to phase out and kill the Seat brand, yeah. and that's been that's been announced and publicly yeah. planned. Huh. Yeah. The, the the real thing is Seat was always in trouble because uh, it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It was like, a, uh, well, the entry level was for Volkswagen Group, but they then they want uh, Skoda to be that. Uh, mm -hmm. Then they change it and uh, want to be the sports uh, entry model. Mm -hmm. Then they change that because Audi was there and they don't want to mix uh, between Audi. And at the end, they made this Cupra movement and decided mm. to kill Seat. Mm. But they, they they tried to kill Seat for a long time. <laughs> yeah. They well, don't like. And how's Skoda doing then? What's the, are they in a similar situation, killing off Skoda or is that... Uh, no, no, no. Skoda for them is, is very good. Still surviving? Yeah, the thing is Skoda is uh, 
performing well in Europe, but also in the Eastern Europe too, mm. because it's pretty famous around there. Uh -huh. And it's not the same for Seat. Right. So they prefer oh. to keep Skoda instead. Mm. Do you know what is this? That the police signal? That, that, I think that is just to kind of... I don't know for sure, but my because always my the, impression was that that's just there to kind of keep you on edge yeah. and to make you think twice about going fast. Because on the... Oh, to remind you. you. You can saw that also on the highway. Mm. Like uh, on the middle? Yeah, I think it's just to kind of scare you into like... <laughs> or to remind you. Be don't, careful. Yeah, be careful, don't go fast. Uh, I think. Okay, these guys are very... <laughs> they don't care, do they? <laughs> <laughs> wow, so this is that long sea bridge. What they have. This is big bumps, that's true. <laughs> yeah, this kind of bridge is natural for speeding, isn't it? You go straight, fast. We'll try this kind of one. <laughs> Not too fast. Not sure if I can pass the, this car. Because now he's speeding too. Oh yeah, he's trying to <laughs> he's trying to regain the lead. <laughs> Good. <laughs> A speed bump is ahead. In three hundred meters, you will reach your waypoint. You 
you are on your route to your destination. Keep straight on this road for more than five kilometers. A speed up is ahead. A speed bump is ahead. This is a lot more. In four hundred meters, moving cameras up. Camera. Six mm -hmm. kilometers per hour. Is a hit. I think it's a fake camera. Fake camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just yeah, the, the, the last time when uh -huh. I was here, uh -huh. I saw several times that the, they have the box, but there was no camera inside. I see. And this one has where they should be the camera. Uh -huh. They have the police signal. No, no camera. Oh, really? At all. Five kilometers. Uh -huh. Turn left at the roundabout. <laughs> so you get really hundred meters. Yep. I mean, it's, it's like uh, it's a different feeling. Like it was soft plastic, but yeah. it's, it's not so bad. I'm not sure if this will be the final steering wheel. Because it's the same as Ionic 5. <laughs> Sure, if just they borrow to put it on the test model or it will be the final I model. Know. Well, I think they should keep it probably. Yeah. And make it unique and distinct. That's good. It's weird because they put the, this Ionic thing, what they call the car is not called Ionic. <laughs> I think they, yeah, I think they want to give some of that, uh, that EV spirit yeah. to it or that image. 
uh, ever wear off on this thing. A speed bump is ahead. <laughs> Tonight I will dream of the <laughs> speed right. bump. That's right. <laughs> Instead of counting sheep to go to counting speed bumps to go to sleep. Open to the east, turn left, at the roundabout. A speed bump. That's crazy. Every two hundred meters, they have a speed bump. <laughs> it's crazy. It is pretty crazy. Yeah. And the traffic's so bad, you can't even go that fast anyhow. Yeah. There are several speed bumps ahead. In 300 meters, turn left at the roundabout. Well, they have. In, I mean, 50 meters, they have two. Yeah. So Genesis is not sold anywhere in Europe, right? And uh, no, uh, it's only sold in Germany, mm. Switzerland, and United Kingdom. Mm. But they don't have uh, actual stores. They, it's like uh, online selling. They have uh, a studio mm -hmm. in uh, Geneva, in Munich, and in London. Okay. And uh, just to go and see the cars, but you need to buy online. Hmm. And they send you the car directly to your home. Have you ever seen one just on the street? Uh, yeah, in Spain, yeah. I have seen one. In three kilometers. It has a uh, German plates, so maybe it was uh, it was a GV60, the mm. electric one. Okay. And I I thought uh, it was some something in vacation or whatever. It was yeah, a long way to drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From, from Germany, it's a long ride. Then in the in the headquarter of Hyundai in Madrid. Mm -hmm. The the president has the GB17, mm -hmm. but with the spice plates. Okay, it's the first only Genesis car with the spice plates. Mm. So how is the reputation there for the Genesis? Well, uh, a few years ago they tried to introduce. Uh, not the Genesis brand, but the Hyundai Genesis, mm -hmm. but they failed. And I think uh, the new ones are not selling pretty well. Mm. They keep trying, keep trying, but uh, they also launch uh, several models that are uh, well, on the taste of European drivers. Uh -huh. Like, uh, for example, the, we have a uh, G70 with the shorting brake, like a oh, station right. bound. Yes, right. 
but anyway, it's not uh, selling that good. Mm. I think the lack of hybrids. Interesting. So yeah. people want the hybrids. Then. Yeah. Now people are crazy about hybrids. Why do they like them so much? Uh, I think it's because the the fuel consumption is lower. Mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, very comfor comfortable to drive because they are automatic. You have that uh, electric drive mode, mm -hmm. even if it's shorter. And also, I think uh, the people is not still ready for EVs. So they s they saw hybrids like a middle step. Right. Yeah. And well, uh, as you see, Toyota in Spain is the, the leader, the sales leader. Mm. And yeah. in Spain, they only sell hybrid. Mm. No internal combustion only engines. Interesting. All is hybrid. Awesome. And they sell in like a hot case. Corolla, Corolla is the best selling car. Uh, they sell in also Yaris, mm -hmm. and they launch presently the Yaris Cross, which is a kind of a small SUV like this. Yeah, and that one is also selling very good. Mm. And people there don't mind buying Chinese cars. Uh, no. I, obviously, they're cheap and everything, but yeah. uh, is there any kind of political consideration? People are turned off by buying a car from like China because it's, yeah. China is like a terrible country, a <laughs> communist dictatorship, and all that, and oppressing the Uyghur, uh, Uyghur minority. And, for example, uh, in, in Spain, mm -hmm. for your reference, uh, the best selling phone. Yeah, it's Xiaomi. Well, okay. And I think Spain is the second market for for Xiaomi after China. Well, wow. Well, yeah. well, they have a good budget phones. So I think it, the same is happening with the cars. For my point of view, I don't I don't spend twenty twenty five thousand in a Chinese car right now because I. I felt like uh, it would be uh, throwing my money, mm. but well, some people think different. Yeah. Well, you, you can think, you can uh, think that about Kia or Hyundai fifteen years ago. Right. Mm. Interesting. Mm. And well, my parents bought uh, uh, one of the first Kia that was sold in Spain huh. in 1998. Okay. Wow. At the roundabout, only at the second exit. What did they What did they get? Uh, Schumann. You Schumann? remember? Yeah. It know. was like a sedan. Hmm. And they have a Mazda powertrain. A oh. I think okay. it was uh, mainly based uh, by a Mazda powertrain and chassis. Oh. In the, the news, turn left. I don't know. What you call there in Japan, but uh, in Spain was uh, three to three, Mazda oh, three to okay. three, right. mm. and the car was re very reliable. Mm. My father has for about twelve years. Then I got the license and I drive around two years extra. Okay, and then we sell it, and mm. the car keeps running. The left lane. In 300 meters, turn left toward Squad. And I think the best, the best thing for Kia in Spain uh, was to get together with Rafa Nadal, tennis player. Oh, okay, right, yeah. yes. Okay. Also that with the seven year warranty, mm -hmm. they launched it and make that help a lot mm. to change the, the brand right. image. Turn 
was just scratching. <laughs> that was pretty annoying, I guess. Keep straight on this road for more than five kilometers. In 500 meters, be careful of traffic signals. Speed limit is 70 kilometers per hour. What do you think about the new Santa Fe? Santa Fe? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I think all the, the Hyundai products are great, and I think they're really scoring on all fronts I, uh, especially in the united states they're really popular mm -hmm. what do you make of it well i think that the design of the new one is a little bit uh, weird well, weird <laughs> too much you mean yeah uh, too strong yeah maybe maybe you know i can see that they they try to make a, a big change from the past generation mm -hmm. because it, it wasn't selling well but uh, they cannot uh, disband uh, Sorento here. <laughs> it's the best selling car. Yeah. For uh, seven months straight. Meters. Speed limit is 70 kilometers per hour. You see that happening to a lot of the designs these days at Hyundai? Is that the, with the re redesigns that they're taking the design in too much of an avant garde yep. direction? Mm -hmm. What do you, how about this one though? You don't mind the Casper so much, right? Uh, yeah. Seven camera. <laughs> For me, the Casper is is good. It's a cool design. Mm -hmm. We can say cute too. Yeah. yeah but the, the Santa Fe is a little bit uh, too boxy. Mm. Maybe they, they get uh, some inspiration from Land Rover too. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I can see them really going for a rugged look, right? Oh. Yeah, uh, maybe even technical, rugged. Uh, yeah. When you write about Korean cars, do you just focus on the, the Hyundai Motor Group or do you do like some of the smaller brands too? No, only Hyundai Motor Group. Because, well, the other brands are, uh, well, Sangyong, mm -hmm. but now it's KGM. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's about to go brand group? Right. And they have Renault, Samsung Motors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not Samsung anymore. Yeah, it's only Renault. Mm -hmm. So I know I I'm not interested in that branch. Yeah. Yeah. Some other one that must be ready to die, right? It's basically yeah. just a manufacturing company at this point. Uh, but you never see their products around. I think now KMG is uh, working well. I think they have uh, black numbers again. <laughs> as I speak, there was a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm.
That uh, speed camera was also empty. <laughs> Good. Thing. I, I will try to to let you know when when I see okay. the, the right. next one. I'll, I'll check it out so I spot it myself. <laughs> because it's funny. I'm drifting off a little bit to sleep here. This coffee didn't uh, quite minutes. do the trick. I think I need another one. <laughs> Seventy kilometers per hour. And uh, do you speak Japanese? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to learn it? <laughs> I think it's hard. <laughs> I'm still working at it, yeah. I study uh, every weekend. I uh, have a teacher, a private teacher. Uh, because I, I, I hear that it's very difficult. Yeah, it is difficult. There's lots of different levels that, in which it's difficult because, uh, well, it just, well, first of all, the, the the script and the writing is completely different from any kind of Latin-based script. The words and the and the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the grammar have no basic relation to anything that we're used to from Europe. And um, then they have a whole different layer of like. Uh, uh, different kinds of layers of like lightness, mm -hmm. like an honorific uh, way of speaking and a humble way of speaking and a polite way of speaking, mm -hmm. and then the same verb for each of these ways of speaking could be a different verb, mm -hmm. even though it's for the same kind of action. And then you have to say it like if I'm talking about myself, I have to use a humble form. When I'm talking about somebody else uh, in general, I have to use a polite form, and I have to. Really speaking to somebody who's like socially above me, then I have to use the uh, honorific form and all this thing. So it's, it gets kind of complicated. Um, and then with the kanji, but the kanji is the, the Chinese characters, and there's no really way to spell them out. So if you see the, like a Chinese character that you can't, you've never seen before, you have no way of knowing how to pronounce it. The only way to do it is by the just In memorization. Kilometers. Okay. Kilometers per hour. Like all this Korean stuff is kind of like an alphabet. I don't know how to read it, but um, each of the symbols is a sound, and when you put the sounds together, you could read it even if you don't know the uh, the meaning of the word. Okay. So, and Japan has a script like that too, that's based on sounds, but it's not the main script. They just use it to uh, basically give a sound to the main Chinese characters. But the Chinese characters, they don't have, you can't look at it and um, sound it out if you don't know the word already. Okay. Like if you see a Spanish word and you know how to, or an English word and you don't know what it means, you can at least like read it out yeah. and say it and look it up in a dictionary. But it's not so easy with these and Chinese characters. You can, you can say that uh, you can live there without knowing Japanese. Uh, I guess you could. Yeah. It would be difficult, but you have to have some kind of basic level, I would guess. But it's not impossible because there are lots of tourists who go there, and but they get around fine without Japanese. So I think it's possible. I think it would be difficult, but. And I'm not sure how enjoyable it would be, but probably all right. Yeah. I mean, it's a safe, clean, easy place to live. Everything's reliable. Everything works. The people are polite. Yeah. They're not gonna. They're not gonna cheat you or try to rip you off. Usually, um, it's pretty. Not a very aggressive society where you have to like kind of hustle and be on, yeah. on guard all the time. So it's a pretty pleasant place to be. But I mean, from like a Western point of view too, it's it has its downsides. It's like a huge um, urban jungle. It's very crowded. It's very noisy. The living conditions are not maybe as nice as we'd want in like well, Spain or America or someplace where we're used to yeah. bigger housing. And, uh, 
bigger portions and more freedom and uh, more greenery, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> so, but it's different. Yeah, it's different. The thing is, I used to follow a, a guy, a Spanish guy, that is uh, living in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. So he had a family there and everything. Seven hundred meters. And well, he is a little bit uh, always claiming about uh, Japanese society. Uh, how they they are very uh, fixed. Yeah, yeah, they're very rigid, not very flexible. They can't like bend the rules or think outside the box. Mm. Uh, if you try to do something that's a little bit different from how it was done in the past, it kind of blows their mind. They yeah. can't they can't adjust really quickly to it. So there is kind of a rigid place like that. Mm. That's for sure. In two kilometers, turn slight right. I think he, here in Korea is it started to change that way of mind. Mm -hmm. It was also a little bit rigid. Right. Yeah. But now I think it's more open. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Japan and Korea have a lot of similarities. But I don't think they like to admit that they have similarities. They're <laughs> kind of rivals in a lot of ways, but in a sense, they are very close to each other. Culture. Yeah. In seven hundred meters, turns light right. So the rest of your honeymoon, where in Southeast Asia are you going to go to? Well, uh, of course, Thailand. Okay. Uh, and then we plan to go to Cambodia or Vietnam. Yeah. But that's, uh, well, still on plans. Okay. We don't have a, a certain plan about that. Turns like right. Yeah. Have you been down to there before? No, never. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Cambodia is really, uh, I don't know how to I haven't been to Cambodia since probably 2016, I guess it was. And, um, but uh, I love, I love Cambodia. Uh, maybe it's changed now. When I was there, I've been there twice. And the last time I was there, it was like tons of Chinese. The Chinese have kind of run in, like taken over the place. And probably now it's even worse. I bet it's just all Chinese. But anyhow, that Angkor Wat is uh, worth seeing, definitely. Uh, go check it out. We are, well, we are about to to look these places, but uh, a few months ago, from fear, a few months ago to now, uh, we saw on the news that uh, several Spanish people uh, mm -hmm. get uh, in trouble in no. Thailand. Because yeah. they, yeah, because they get, uh, they got sick and no one can care about them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you mean they get went to the hospital and couldn't yeah. get care? Yeah. What kind of sick did they get? And they were about to, to die. Uh, oh, one, of okay. them, one of them was uh, pancatitis. Oh, okay. So uh, Spanish uh, Air Force need to fly up, uh, a flight to Thailand and get the people out. Oh my gosh. To take care, yeah, to, to take care of them. <laughs> I can't believe that the Air Force would go do that for so much. Yeah. And, well, you always uh, read about that, uh, well, at the end they are in the third world. Hmm. So you can, uh, well, be careful about what you eat. Yeah, for sure. What yeah. you drink. Yeah. So... And Cambodia is even worse than Thailand. So from that, uh, I'm not pretty sure to go there. So that's why I'm, we cannot uh, look at them Look at it uh, very seriously. Yeah. Mm. 
I got uh, badly sick in Cambodia. Really? <laughs> From eating food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for like two days, I had a terrible fever <sighs> and terrible diarrhea. Oh my God. And uh, body aches and pains. Uh, so maybe even three days. So but it was really rough. They have McDonald's there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I remember seeing him. Just to be sure. <laughs> Just to be sure and eat the uh, safety food. Yeah, well, I was I was kind of reckless. I ate some stuff that was like from a food stand out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, okay. In the countryside. They've been sitting in a plastic bag all day in the sun. So it was not a good idea. <laughs> These, these are the things I don't want to experience. <laughs> I suppose if you are careful and you can avoid it, there are, there are ways to do it. I was eating like raw uh, mango, like green uh, mango, uh, and it had been, you know, it's just I was pretty reckless and silly for doing it. The rest of my family was fine. I went with my family, and they were, everybody else was okay. <laughs> But yeah, that Angkor Wat complex is really something. Uh, it's like that ancient temple city that had been kind of covered in jungle until the like 1800s and lost some kind of the history. And then they rediscovered it, and uh, it just is amazing. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. It's all in the jungle. The, the buildings are so impressive. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'd go back there again in a second. <laughs> I've been there twice, and I really enjoy it. And Thailand's great too. I mean, uh, lots of great beaches and things. It's a little bit more developed. Bangkok itself is a good city, but uh, highly recommend it. But if you go to Okinawa, you can still get the beach, and you probably won't get sick. <laughs> <laughs> but the beach won't probably beach won't be as exotic or as quite as tropical as you go yeah, to it's, it's, like uh, Thailand. It's the real deal. Yeah, as I told you, we are looking for a uh, relax yeah. for three or four days and then came back to Spain for work. Yeah, yeah back to the, back to the uh, grindstone. <laughs> yeah. We are very close to the oh, yeah, almost. destination. About, uh, ten, are you hungry? Ten minutes or something. Not really. I had breakfast and I ate on the plane at like 3 a.m. <laughs> so I'm all right. But I'll probably eat something. We had the breakfast this morning, but was in a rush. Uh, I see. Because you, they, you must be hungry then? They, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. They open at uh, 6.30. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> that was wild. They open at uh, 6.30 and we need to leave the hotel at 7. So. I see, right. Well, they'll probably feed us well at lunch and then again at dinner and, uh, yeah. Mm. wonder what time we leave tomorrow. Will it say it for me? Uh, I think it's 8.50. 8.50, yeah. yeah. So we'll get us a nice. Yeah. We're going to visit this oh my gosh it takes an hour and a half just to get there yeah it's insane then and, we're, be... and we're going to spend uh, an hour and 15 minutes there it takes longer to get there than we're going to spend at the place yeah wow the, the traffic in Seoul is crazy where is this Genesis place Suji I wonder if I've been there before so is it must be far out of town, I guess. Or I don't know, maybe on the other side of town, I'm not sure. Maybe. 
I think Suji is the is the name of the village. So when do you actually head back uh, uh, uh leave uh, Korea? On the 28th. So it's uh, Friday? Uh, yeah, Friday. What time does your plane leave? Uh, 11.50 in the morning. Oh, okay. no. It's probably not a direct flight, right? From Busan to... Uh, no, I'm going back uh, to Seoul. Oh, okay. By train, oh. and then in the morning, the next day, I'm leaving the Seoul. I see. So when do you when do you go back to Seoul on Thursday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thursday night. Yes. Then uh, I have the plane from here to Barcelona. Okay. And from Barcelona to Alicante. Five hundred meters. Nice. Be careful of traffic signals. Speed limit is seventy kilometers per hour. To came here, I came from Madrid. Mm. Wow. So well, the, the, there was no train, train up there or uh, drive? Fly. 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 Oh. In 700 meters. They, they cover flights, but not trains. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I would prefer a train. <laughs> Because going inside the airport for just a uh, 40 minutes flight is crazy. Yeah. Mm. 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 It would take you the same time as taking the train. Yeah. You're always moving, right? You have to yeah. check your luggage, check in through the mm. flight, at the check in counter, yeah. go through security, wait at the gate, move into the place, sit in the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sit in your seat, wait till the plane takes off. Then uh, when it takes off, there is a lot of wind, the plane makes this. Yeah. Then when it lands, it also has wind. <laughs> yeah. I am staying in Busan um, for Thursday night, looks like. And then I leave from Busan. Oh, yeah. First You'll have thing connect next morning, yeah. I think it's a direct flight from Busan to Tokyo. We don't have a direct flight from Busan. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I'm kind of surprised that there's a direct flight from to Tokyo. How many hours it take to go to Tokyo? Uh, just an hour and a half, two oh. hours, an yeah. hour 45 minutes. In 300 meters, turn left. Turn left. And then you have reached your destination. To wait for a green light or can I think you can go, eh? It's a green light. You have reached your destination. You have reached your destination. Your destination is eighty. Meters away. Please refer to the map. There's an electric car charging station near the destination.
All right. Okay, that's it.